of all of the things that we've used in the 1970s. Given all the fuss about CFCs, Jonathan Shanklin had examined historic records of Antarctic ozone measurements, dating back to the 1950s. I started plotting up some of these by hand on a sheet of graph paper. Um, and what we've got are each year's ozone observations from 1957 up to 1984. And up until the mid-70s, you probably couldn't say much was going on. But then after the mid-70s, things start going downhill and ozone values are getting lower and lower. The record showed that in the Antarctic spring, half of the ozone layer above the Halle Bay research station seemed to disappear. Here was blinding evidence that something dramatic was happening in an incredibly short period of time. It was really this, this graph that I took to, to Joe Farman and sort of plonked it on his desk and said, look, something is going on and we need to explain what. John's bosses, Joe Farman and Brian Gardner, were stunned by what they saw. Detailed monitoring of the planet's ozone layer was carried out by a state-of-the-art satellite instrument called the Total Ozone Mapping Spectrometer, controlled by NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. John couldn't understand why NASA hadn't spotted the missing ozone already. I actually wrote to the guys that were doing the calibrations of satellites, pointing out that our ozone values seemed a bit low, and was this confirmed by the satellite? Yeah, but, but you have to realize that uh, here at Goddard, there's 10,000 people who, who work here. So who do you send the letter to? They'd actually, you know, written to the wrong guy. With nothing from NASA to suggest they were wrong, Joe, Brian and John published their results in May 1985. Every October, a hole appears in the ozone layer over the South Pole. And what worries scientists most is... They're still not exactly sure what causes the hole. The Farman paper uh, landed like a bombshell. We went back and looked very carefully at the satellite observations, and we realized the way we were processing the data was wrong. If you get what I call strange results, you just reject them. And so when we started to see the ozone loss every September, October in Antarctica, the algorithm we used just discounted all the data. It threw it away. The paper was a huge shock. We had been thinking about ozone depletion being something like, you know, 5% of the ozone layer would be lost in maybe about a century. It was only a theory, it was a long time in the future. Gee, does that sound like a phenomenon that we talk about today? Uh, but all of a sudden we had this huge surprise, which no one anticipated, that it wasn't 5% 100 years from now, it was 35% now. And so people began to move quite quickly. We started showing our satellite data around. I mean, it was really, I think, visually stunning for people to see that it was continental in scale. And in fact, a big um, amount of ozone was being removed. And that's where you get the term ozone hole. It looks like somebody punched a hole in the ozone layer.